What's happening guys? My name is David and this is Tippy Bits and today I'm going to be bringing you guys a piece of tech I've been waiting for for a long time, over a year at this point. So without further ado, let's dive right into it. Today I'm going to be reviewing and unboxing the Zima Board single board computer. So Zima Board is a Kickstarter campaign that was started by Ice Whale Technology little over a year ago I think it was just in January I think I saw the first kind of press release so they've been battling all of the chip shortages and things like that and while this isn't actually my pledge which is a funny story um, this is one of the first production units so super excited and with that let's just dive in also I'm my cameraman today and every day because I don't have a cameraman so this thing, first and foremost, just looks cool. So this is a limited edition engineering sample that they sent over. And I mean, look at this case. That is so incredibly, um, yeah, I, I want to say the word steampunk, but that is totally not it. Like hacker feeling, you know, feels like I've just gotten some special release, which I have. Um, so by the way, super Big thanks to uh, John and Lauren for sending this over from the Zima board team. By the way, if you haven't checked out their Discord, you totally should. Um, because everyone's discussing not only this, but their operating system, which they're building out, which is Casa OS. So again, also like super attention to detail. Look at this on the letter stock. That's Ice Whale Technologies logo. And then this is just a nice letter from Lauren. So with that, let's get into the Zima board. I'm actually going to just pull this out and let's talk about this for a couple minutes before getting into all the rest. So the Zima board's kind of filling this niche right now. Um, we have, you know, Raspberry Pis, Odroids, things along those lines, but none of them are really great right out of the box. And this is one of the first single board computers that I feel like really fits the server need so to speak and I'll tell you why so we're gonna start out right at the front so it's got um, barrel jack power supply 12 volts 3 amps nothing super special there uh, two USB 3 ports and then um, a pair of gigabit Ethernet ports now this one's kind of big because a lot of the people who are gonna be running you know um, network appliances things like firewalls routers um, you need to have two ports so you can have your trust and your untrust. Um, so super cool. These are both powered by uh, Realtechnic. So they were working with the Intel team to try and secure some uh, Intel NICs, but um, weren't able to secure the supply in time. So again, really neat. Um, enables you to do all sorts of different net networking applications. Um, also, we've got a mini... I'm going to say this wrong. This is a mini display port, um, 1.2. So that supports 4K resolution at 60 FPS. So again, super great for streaming video or anything like that. Um, then this is, this is honestly, I think one of my favorite parts. This is a, a PCI second gen slot um, with four lanes. So that gets you up to two gigabytes a second gigabytes, by the way, not gigabits per second of uh, data transfer. So that's going to be super fantastic if you're doing, you know, let's say, let's like scooch into frame a little bit here. <laughs> um, if you're doing uh, Plex transcoding, if you need hard um, uh, ML accelerators, anything like that, you'll be able to plug in here. And, you know, we were talking about those network applications earlier. This could technically support up to eight gigabit ethernet ports. I mean, talk about some of the cool things you could build with that, you know? Um, you could have practically your own uh, managed, you know, open flow switch. Um, also, interesting note, the PCI Express slot is cut off at the back. So if you have a full length PCI card that you want to put on here, you don't have to hack it up. You don't have to hack this up. So that was just a super cool attention to detail that they had. I think that came in as a recommendation on uh, one of the updates. And they were just like, yeah, sure, we'll go with it. 
Um, also, for the more hacker-minded of you, there is an exposed JTAG port. I don't pretend to know anything about JTAG or what you could do with that, um, but the option's there. So, let's see, let me make sure I haven't missed anything yet. Uh, oh yeah, also NVMe storage. Um, again, this is going to be super, uh, super, super under what the NVMe spec can do. NVMe spec, I think you could potentially get like 32 gigabytes a second. Not that anyone needs that, but you could put an NVMe card here um, and have a cache for that. Then coming around to the back, we've got two SATA 6 gig per second ports. And the interesting thing is in the middle here, I'm gonna show you, uh, we actually have a micro Molex power supply in the middle. So that micro Molex, actually they have, um, they have cables on their website that you can buy um, that will split that out and then use, you can use that to power um, pretty large and hungry drives, honestly. So even like a full size three and a half inch drive should be able to be fed by that. Um, so super neat. And then coming around to the top, it's got an aluminum uh, heat spreader. That's not going to be um, a huge bottleneck for anyone, I don't think. So the CPU that comes with this, um, this one also is the 216, and I'll talk about the different versions here in just a second. But um, any of the CPUs that come with this have like a 6 watt TDP. So again, super big uh, aluminum heat spreader for you know, a relatively low powered um, CPU. And now let's talk about that. So the CPU, there, there were three different models that released. It's the 216, the 432, and the 832. So the 216 was two gigabytes LPDDR4 um, with 16 gigabytes eMMC. Um, the 432 is four gigabytes, 32 gigabytes. And the 832 is eight gigabytes, 32 gigabytes. Now, the 216 was actually originally supposed to ship with the N3350. Um, however, um, again, there were those part shortages. I've heard rumors of people checking them and saying, oh, yeah, mine's got the 3450, which is um, four cores as opposed to the 3350's two cores. So it has four cores, uh, 1.1 gigahertz with a 2.2 gigahertz boost. Um, 6 watt TDP supports hardware uh, video acceleration, you know, HVAC 265, um, 264, and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the CPU, because it's a Celeron, supports uh, VTD and VTX, so super great. You can have um, your uh, digital I.O. and stuff like that, um, all of your Excel, I was going to say acceleration. <laughs> All your virtualization is going to be able to work just fine with this. You know, you could run uh, ESXi, Proxmox, um, Docker, you name it. You're able to virtualize it on this, which is super cool. And that kind of goes into, you know, why this board is here. You know, um, this is really, like I said, targeted at the person who's doing this at home. They want to um, be able to serve up what they want to serve up, you know. Having those SATA ports there and built in um, is just fantastic. That way it also supports smart status, which is something you don't get over the USB drives. And that could cause wear, that could cause premature drive failures. So super neat. So with that, let's go ahead. I'm going to actually open this up. I'll show you the bottom as well. It's not actually transparent like it shows on their site, but I don't actually care. <laughs> We're going to keep unboxing this. Also, just a fair warning. This is not the first time I've unboxed this. If you follow me on Twitter, uh, and if you don't, you should. Um, I actually recorded this whole talk before, um, and the audio was terrible. It was, it was just a bad unboxing. So we're just going to pretend that didn't happen. So coming in, they also included, uh, this is the mini display port to HDMI cable. Super glad that they've done that because I don't have a mini display port um, cable. Also, we've got a Ethernet cable. Um, has nice little metal shielding on either end. You know, and this actually kind of goes back to one of the things that I've seen a lot. They have been super careful to ensure that all of the parts that they get 
are the highest quality. And that's really important. They're not just trying to ship the cheapest, fastest Zima board, you know, that they can. They're actually taking the time and um, you can see it through their updates. They're like, hey, we weren't able to secure this part at a quality that we wanted. Um, so they push back the ship date. And I actually really appreciate that because it means we're going to end up with a really high quality product. Um, also, they sent a Kyoxia 480 gigabyte SSD. And um, I'm super happy about this because uh, I also bought two Kingston 250 gigabyte SSDs, but I won't have to use that. Um, I can use those on my pledge, which will be nice. And again, here is that uh, that SATA cable I was telling you about. So it's just a regular SATA cable here. And then this is the breakout for mini Molex or micro Molex and then SATA. And that just plugs into the back. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna actually wait on this. We're gonna we're gonna pull out the power supply real quick. So um, if you're buying from the website, also fun not fun fact. This is actually not a fun fact. Um, if you're buying from the website, make sure you buy a power supply because it's not included with the board off the website. If you're on the Kickstarter campaign, power supply is gonna be included um, on the website. Make sure to buy one. Um, the power supply comes with all your different international plugs. Here I've got my US plug switched on, so that's just a super nice detail. You're not going to have to worry about getting an adapter after the fact. Uh, the power supply is 12 volts, 3 amps, so again, probably going to be able to power just about any drive you want to plug in there. And then this is actually one of those really interesting little bits. Um, that they provided with it. You know, we were talking earlier about um, NVMe, and this does support NVMe drives. Again, you're going to be data limited. I think it's just interesting because it actually has two slots for drives. One of them um, supports NVMe M keys, um, and that's all piped through PCI, so you're going to get the full two gigabytes per second. Um, and then it has this NGFF, B key slot. And the interesting thing about that is this doesn't connect over PCI Express. It actually connects over SATA. So um, theoretically, you could have the NVMe here going over PCI. You could connect an NGFF over SATA. You know, maybe this could be your primary drive and then this could be a cache drive or something along those lines. But I thought that was an interesting choice just because um, you're really going to be limited on NGFF uh, if you use SATA. And even the NVMe, I mean, it's it supports 32 giga, hold on, gigabytes, yep, 32 gigabytes per second. Um, so again, it's going to be hugely capped, but I don't think most home users are going to really miss that. You know, for example, um, if you were just doing Plex, I mean, you're not going to see those sorts of data speeds. So um, it's very interesting. And one of the more interesting expansion cards I think that they also have is um, they have a breakout board that allows you to hook up five additional drives. And I think that's actually probably more interesting to me because then you get into, you know, the realm of what um, what this could really be, which is like a massive, pretty large storage server. I mean, five additional drives. If you were to get 14 terabyte drives, you know, I'm terrible at math in my head. So we're just going to pretend like I didn't even mention drive size. 10, 10 gigabytes, let's or terabytes. So if you did 10 terabyte drives, then you could have up to 50 terabytes connected just to this one board. Um, and that's only using those. You can also connect then the six uh, gigabit, um, two six gigabit drives natively to the board. So that's a lot of storage to have on a tiny little device like this. So super exciting. And with that, that is pretty much it. So um, again, su super, super thankful to John and Lauren. Lauren's the founder, John's co-founder of um, the Zima board. Thank you guys so much for sending this over. I'm so excited to dive in. And um, if you haven't checked out, they have a website. You can check out their Kickstarter. Come join the community forums. Um, and thanks so much. Appreciate you guys checking out my review. And uh, I'll catch you next time.